What's up, guys? James here. Time for another day at the shop. It's Saturday morning, and uh, let's get this going. This guy up the other day, a couple months ago, I guess. Mm. The birds are chirping. View of the lake down there. Beautiful morning here in sunny Florida. Let's check out this bus. All right, so we made some head headway. Let's get at it. Panels going in. Oh. Let, me, let me get that on video. This is a lot of work. I don't know whose idea this was. All right, well, these corners are kind of a pain, but uh, some measuring and clamping, we're ready to make that cut. I'm putting this on, make sure that this is nice and level. At this point, this point, and this point are all on the same plane. And then I'm looking across to that one over there. You can see that's nice and level. And then we measure down at the bottom up to there, 21 and a quarter. And then we got the straight edge on here too, showing that. So we're nice and straight off of there. All right. And then we got rid of all that nasty rust that was here too. I got one little fill piece to go there. That's going to be exciting. All right, we're making headway on this bus here. I got uh, these other panels on this side set up. Let me see. So this is ready to be final trim. This one needs a final trim. Trim in, but we got everything clamped. We got a nice straight edge on there to make sure everything's good. That eliminates all that old rust. And then I got to make one panel and put the uh, gas filler back in there. And then we got the uh, inner fenders all done in there. And over here, we got that. That fender's all done. I still gotta grind down the welds and stuff, but that worked out, worked out pretty good going right along that brace there. And uh, so plenty of room for some big wheels someday or whenever. Boy, what a project though. What a project. More panels to weld in. Can't wait to get some paint on this thing though, I tell you. All right, so I haven't been doing much filming here, but here's the corner installed and I'm just getting ready to make my final cut along here. I got it all fitting real nice down along there. It's nice and flat. This is measuring real nice here, nice and square. I measured down from up there on both sides and I'm within like a sixteenth of an inch. Got the gas door to go back in. But uh, coming along, trying to get this back with this sheet metal down here. It's been, it's been actually months, months and months. But let's go. Guys, when you're cutting your panels, use the, the real thin blade. There's either the 045. It is super thin, so when you're making this cut here, you're not uh, making a huge gap. You're just making the thinnest gap as possible. I'm gonna run right on top of this other, this factory cut here of this patch panel, and then I'll just have this thin little gap, weld her up. All right, so I got this all tacked, and I used my little, uh, my little awesome little sander thing here, and I carefully sanded each tack down. You don't want to take off any metal, off the sheet metal pieces, as, you know, as little as you can, because you don't want to thin it out, it's already thin. You want to keep it as thick as you can, so I just carefully took the patch down so that I could go back and hammer a dolly, and with this big window here, it's pretty easy to go in there and go on. And I gotta make sure that the, you want to make sure that the panels are nice and butted up to each other, not like offset. So a few spots, the panel is off. So I was able to hammer that straight. And now I'm going to go ahead and just in one pass, I'm going to just 
pick this up. I, I think it's better to just take that heat and take the heat and move it along the panel and then deal with that and shrink it. You got to do it or whatever versus doing the little pieces. It just doesn't seem to work. Not the prettiest thing, but uh, it gets the job done. Definitely have some serious warping, like it's sucked in here, and so I'm going to be having to do some hammering and dollying to try to get this thing close. But I still have all that to do too, so this panel is going to be a mess. All right, so I feel like this episode's already too long, so I haven't really been filming much. But we just got this all spotted in along there with the spot welder. Eric's working on the tray right now, the battery tray. And I am over here working on this seam. This panel ended up being this fender about a quarter inch too long. So we opted to keep the flange end on that end, the spot weld along the seam. And then here it was overhanging a quarter inch. I just ground it off. And I've been going down and uh, using the MIG and just MIGging in, like I have here, about every half inch. And then now I'm gonna I'm just gonna spot and jump, spot, jump, spot, jump, and try not to overheat this panel here so this stays nice and flat. And then I'll just fill in between kind of like spot tack, spot tack, spot tack, or you know, tack, 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 whatever you want to call it, uh, to get this in and then grind on that. Rather than trying to get in here and take these spot welds out in there, so that seemed to be the way to go. And I got a nice straight line coming down here. And following along in there so hopefully it'll all be good what are you doing in there Eric hi Eric hey <laughs> there's the battery you know, tray here the old battery tray here and you can actually see this that gap right there about a quarter inch is because of the body drop so it's a different spot than it normally would have been out the gas hole you gas hole all right, got the gas door tacked in. Got a nice straight shot to the gas tank. Like I was saying, I did a bunch of tacks, basically little tack tacks along that edge. Looks, feels real good. And then I re-welded all that, this whole scene here too of the, uh, the little rocker to the inner so that should be nice and strong. Alright guys, I lost my audio recording on these next three or four minutes of the video here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to dub over and explain what I'm pointing and looking at. But basically we're just kind of checking out the inner rear fenders here that we completed a few weeks ago. And that little patch guy there that we did to fix that rust. We got all of the uh, rear hydraulic suspension stuff in there. All the new panels that we made, got the battery trays in and the little uh, tail light boxes installed. We got our straight edges clamped up along there to make sure everything stays nice and straight. Belly pans are in, condensers in, and then up in here we got a few little spots to uh, make some little patches, just kind of working our way through. So basically after this was shot, we have the hole from the driver, back of the driver, or back of the front doors to the back is completely done. All of the metal fabs done. And uh, we're moving on to the front suspension. All right, here we go. We got Eric is working on removing the front nose uh, sheet metal. As we can see, there is a lot of damage on this nose. I'm probably going to keep it and uh, maybe put it on the end of a outdoor bar or something but that whole front edge there needs to be repaired on the inside as well so we're, we'll just uh, make a piece to repair that and I'm actually thinking about raising that bottom edge of the bus up about an inch so that it matches the uh, rocker panels so he's got all those spot welds drilled out with a spot weld drilling uh, drill bit which is almost like a uh, end mill you can see all those spots there and then uh, peel that away we got that damage up there to repair your typical damage underneath the windshield. And then on the edge there, it's basically folded over. So we're going to grind that edge away and just try to carefully grind away the old uh, nose. 
on that side edge. The replacement panel that we got is from the Funky Green Panels, uh, Gerson's. There it is right there. The headlight buckets are uh, separate pieces which have to be welded in with some probably just some spot welds. So we got, you can see the uh, weld through primer on it. So here Eric's making the first cuts, getting this nose off. <laughs> Eric doesn't like wearing a face shield even though he almost cut his front lip off with a grinding wheel once. Uh, a little grinding wheel broke and flew off a quarter panel and kind of cut the bottom of his lip, bottom lip off. you think he would uh, wear a face shield. So we're kind of just making a low cut here. The new panel goes up about three or four inches from that edge there, but we figured we would make a first cut and we can always cut more. There is multiple layers there, so you're just trying to cut through just the outside sheet metal layer and not any of the inner support. Take your time on that and just kind of, you can kind of go by feel and get through that first layer. And so here's where we have the edge peeled over and you can see here, you have the bottom piece, which is the curled over part, the middle, which is the inner panel, and then the outside one is the outer panel. So basically you're just kind of grinding it away to reveal, to break it apart, and then you can just go in and just peel off that inner piece. So he's just carefully taking his time. He's actually, see how he's holding the grinder? He's holding it actually kind of on the, just on the top edge. And so that way it's, he can really see it when it just pops away. So you're, you don't want to grind away any of the inner edge at all, or you know, the uh, inner support piece. So just take your time there and you will get that old nose released from there. And then there's there's little spot welds there I'm pointing to on the inside that you have to take a chisel and just get that little strip that's left and uh, get that off of there. And when you're putting your new panel on, you know, you can spot it back on or you could do a uh, panel bond. So you can see here how that this panel has like a, about a half inch uh, crease on there. And that's so that the nose can pop over that, that inner st support structure and then you gotta hammer and dolly that edge over. So that whole seam will have to get bent over about 90, more than 90 degrees, about 120 degrees maybe, yep. See my little finger? Just like that. Uh, bend that edge over right on that crease line and uh, you may even have to kind of recreate a new line and you're probably going to want to put your doors on and off a couple of times to make sure that you know that seam is is good so what we're looking at there is all of this like wool wax type of stuff that uh z bard or something this was up in kentucky um so it had some sort of, you know, uh, aftermarket undercoating, uh, wool wax, some sort of, you know, waxy uh, stuff sprayed, you know, here and there. And, you know, this, the areas where they did it, it really uh, worked well. Uh, we can see some of the rot on that air box uh, there. But that whole air box and everything other than these spot welds all along in here are, are basic it's basically just kind of floating there it's got the little side pieces and then uh those front and the vent parts that are holding it in place who knows what the hell i'm talking about here seems like we've looked at this about 10 times already oh we got that piece in there now that, that little rectangle down there Boy, the rotisserie uh, little rolly frame sure is nice being able to put the bus on its side. I, I kind of hesitated at first if I wanted to build that or not and certainly don't regret it because it, uh, it's almost a must if you're going to do this type of uh, full restoration on a bus. Uh, let's get her rolled over. It's, it's not quite as easy as I guess the uh, front and end, front and back type rotisserie where they're kind of pivoting on some tubing, uh, you know, round tubing like a, like a spit, like a 
that type of rotisserie, but uh, those take up more space. And uh, I kind of like this one where there's nothing in the front or the back to get in your way. So it's, I mean, that's two of us handling that, no problem. Uh, my wheel locks are kind of busted on those casters already. They really uh, basically don't work anymore. So probably need to put some pieces of angle iron down when we go to do that. That would kind of keep the wheels from rolling because that's one of the issues we've had is that the bus kind of rolls as we're trying to roll it back onto the caster wheels. All right, looks like uh, Eric's contemplating life here. Oh, oh, there she goes. Ba bam That definitely looks like some yard art. I have a little outdoor area that I want to turn into a like an outdoor hangout bar area that I think I'm going to either just hang it from under the bar or hang it in the back. Maybe I'll do a little paint job on it or who knows. A lot of cleanup to do there. I'm really wishing uh, I had uh, one of those laser cleaning machines right now where I could just blast all that and be done with it. It's on my wish list. But overall, it looks pretty good in there. Except for that. Rats. So I actually have a whole nother front uh, air box that I got out of another bus that I may probably just going to cut pieces and graft it in because getting that whole thing out of there, it would be a lot more work than I think just fixing those corners. Uh, but I'll have to investigate that a little more. I haven't got to that yet. And I'm also putting AC in the bus, so I may be looking at some way to put uh, graft into that, that air box a little bit so that the AC fits really good. All right, so these little chisel things got off Amazon. They work really well, actually. Got two or three pairs of them now um, for prying away the spot welds. If you don't want to, sometimes you don't want to drill. So these guys here, I made these little strips and we put little marks here and there. And that was to mark where the, I guess I didn't show that earlier, where the, the lip was on the front nose. So I was concerned about putting the new nose on and then, you know, the windshield not fitting. So we made, I think, four of those strips and we marked where they go and then they clamp up at the top edge and you can swing them down. And, and then when we're putting the nose on, we'll use those to make sure that the nose panel uh, isn't too high, where all of a sudden you go to put the windshield in and you got the whole thing done and in there and the windshield won't fit because that would really suck. All right, so uh, repairing this little uh, rusty spot here. This was the only spot on that upper lip that needed to be repaired. So we just cut a strip and then you can see how extra long it is. And then once we get the nose kind of fitted in, we'll just trim that top edge down to, uh, to fit. So I wasn't concerned about that at all. I just wanted to get this thing in there. And so you can see here, it's not quite fitting the turn on the bend there. So I'm just using the angle grinder with the thin disc, cutting disc to kind of give me some space. And then now it fits in, tack it in, and then I'll finish welding that up, hammer and dolly a little bit. And it's actually a little bit laid back, a little bit too far. I realized after uh, we stuck the nose on there, so I'll have to, uh, I'm gonna have to probably use the stretcher and I'll uh, just hand hold the stretcher up there and stretch that out a little bit to get it to come out toward the front. All right, quickly welded that up with the MIG. No big deal. It's all going to get ground down a little bit and covered. Oop. So that's the major rust there on that front nose. We've got to clean up. And like I said, I'm thinking about taking about an inch off that bottom edge of the front nose and moving the bumper up. Because for some reason, 
the front edge and the front bumper are lower than the rockers and so when this thing goes to lay frame or lay rocker panel when we're lowering it boop there goes the uh headlight bucket ah look at that new nose pretty um i'm just rambling here guys but uh Basically, as it is right now, stock, when we lower the bus down all the way, the bumper's gonna sit on the ground first and the rockers won't touch. So to be level, the rockers will end up being about an inch off the ground. And then if you lower the rear more, it'll kind of go at an angle. And so the rockers maybe will be touching at the back, but will be a gap at the front. It won't be sitting level just because of the mere fact that the front uh, dog legs coming down in front of the wheel wells and then the front nose are about an inch lower than the rocker panels and the whole rest of the chassis. So I'm thinking since I gotta redo that front edge anyways and putting the new nose on anyways that I might uh, I might raise all that stuff up and uh, so the bus will sit absolutely flat when it's on the ground. So we're just kind of taking a look-see here at the fit of this new panel. Obviously any panel that you get is probably going to need some tweaking and adjustment. These are This is the most expensive nose as far as I know on the market. It was about $1,100 uh, with the headlight buckets um, for the 68, 69, and I guess maybe 71 uh, low light bay windows early bays and uh which is a whole one piece as you can see i've seen where they have a bottom strip it's about six eight inches of the bottom edge and then you can use a later bay front nose and you got to graft in the bottom edge and you also have to fill in where the uh upper turn signals are on the left and right of the vents um so you end up having a lot more work. Those noses are a lot cheaper, like three, four hundred bucks. Um, but then you gotta buy the bottom piece, and then you gotta weld in the turn signals. So it ends up being, you know, more work too. But um, just depends on your budget and how much time you got. But overall, I think this nose looks pretty good. The curve is a little different, at least right now, when we just have it laying there. But once we start getting it all clamped. Uh, the curve along the windshield should be should be fine um, Definitely a lot it's gonna be a lot of work to get this nose on it's still not on today And this this was filmed probably two months ago um, We've been kind of Waiting on putting it on to make sure that everything uh, We have finished Nathan's of... playing with his new toy here. All right, let's see it 415 on there I mean, you could probably go pretty quick if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Huh. It cleans it right That's up. crazy. That's how it comes the new out. laser. What? Laser machine. Oh. <laughs> Start bonfire. You right? Huh. Yeah. Let's see if it'll clean your shoes. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was wearing, I'm wearing my like fancy you shoes that, today. That trash can okay. for like one second. <laughs> right, and just like melted it. Yeah, fuck yeah. Put a dip in it. Huh. That's crazy. Laser cleaning machine. Technology. China. Yeah, I love it.